Yo, yo, yo. We live on location. Me and D-Miles is here at home in Orlando. And yo, man, we got a shot town brethren in the building today. You know what I'm saying? This, this, this real hometown cooking right here. This is my partner in them. You know what I'm saying? This shorty in them. This Joe from out west. You feel me, man? We got my homeboy, Iman Shumper, world champion. Yeah, sir. World champion. <laughs> world champion, Iman Shumper. And let's not forget hip hop lyricists with album out right now, Joyride. Welcome to the show, bro, man. We appreciate you for coming up on us, pulling up on us from Miami. You know, hey, hey, yo. You know, I appreciate y'all having me. You know that. All right, bro. Like, first of all, you know, we appreciate you coming and show some love to us, man. I'm a fan, bro. Real talk. Brought to you by AT&T 5G. First question we ask everybody who come on the show is, uh, when you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to say the first person that really, like, got me was Paul Pierce. Mm. Oh, the truth. Celtic Paul Pierce. Yeah, look, cute. <laughs> look, you know, look, 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 look. He look, gonna let you know. know. Got, that's why I was so hyped when we played them people again. Um, we played them people in the playoffs. We play them, I finally got to get at them people a little bit, talk my shit when I first came. He was doing shit that it was just like, you know how somebody like, it, he just was getting the spots and it was a Yeah, point. he not faster than you. He, <laughs> yeah, he don't like, got the shake up right dribble. He's he just get right a, a little bit of space to do um, what he needs to do and he good. I'm like, it's right. Damn, like I could steal this a hundred times out of a hundred times. <laughs> yeah. And I can't steal it. He gonna step back, not even away, like far away from me, just mm -hmm. a little bit and barely get it off. And it's oh my man. It was all mid, it was all mid-range too. Yeah. That's his operating office right there. That's 17, 18 feet. Cookie. Uh, then you know step you got back the king. King. start getting mad. I was like, hey man, do this. I'm man, all that. Yo, I'm guarding them though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all this advice yeah. now. Where this advice coming from? I, I hate that, man. I hate when you a person give me advice. Like, bro, I know how to guard him. <laughs> like 30 points later, they got all the right ideas like he, how you could have stopped them. Like, brother, man, where was your antennas when he was up here tattooing my ass the whole like, game? No, help me out during the game, you think. But, but yeah, he, he was the first person to really frustrate me. And I, I, I remember that because I, I recall becoming a fan because of that. Like, I had to study I believe Paul Pierce began my YouTube craze where I start watching players whole highlights. Yeah. I'll watch I'll watch 18 minutes. <laughs> I don't even right. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the, gonna get the film from uh uh the 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 film guys. They they're gonna give me this stuff for the scout. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna mm -hmm. watch that. But I'm gonna become a fan all week knowing I gotta play this man on Saturday. I'm gonna watch your celebrations. You know what I'm saying? How rude is he? Do he talk shit? Do he push off every time he do this? Well, I see this clip over and over. He always hit his game. Do he push off? How is he getting in separation? Yeah. Am I going to get that call? I'm definitely not getting that call. So how am I going to make up for that shit? Yeah. <laughs> what do I do when he do this? Because it ain't, it clearly, it's a foul. But yeah, you ain't getting that call. I ain't you, the look, call. Look, so. look, you and him, me and him, I'm not getting it. Most people are not getting that call. Hey, but that tell you like that tell you how old we is, cause like you saying YouTube, like you can go on YouTube and watch somebody highlights. When we got in the league, it won YouTube. We had to go to that video guy and get that information and, and get them tapes. Hey, hey, send me all his shots for the last five games. <laughs> like <laughs> I need to know the plays they running from, like all this stuff. But for you now in this day and era, to you can actually go on YouTube and I, I can see what these boy what he like to do because you know in them highlights you gonna see if he like the three sixty on the break you gonna see about three or four of them through the highlights. I'm looking at all that when he get a breakaway, do he look back? Oh, he don't look back. Is he cradling, or is he like putting it in one hand and getting it done fast? Can he palm? He palm the ball. You know, I'm looking at all the little key pickups and triggers that you gonna front your move somehow. I don't know how. 
Yeah, you'll see a highlight film and he went right the whole highlight film. Like, oh, class. he can't go left. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so wait, before we get there, I want to rewind, take it all the way back because it, 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 something just popped up that I, I was unaware of. This was, this was news to me. You went to middle school with Evan Turner? Yeah. We played on the same team. I broke the steel I, this record. I never knew that. Out oh. there in the west suburb, <laughs> west side, we got west side of Chicago in here, a whole lot of Joe, you know what I'm saying? Joe, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I never knew that about you and him that y'all went to grade school together and hooped together. I never knew that. So when we went to uh to Emerson, I believe Evan was so you know all of Evan was dwindling. He was always the, you know, you got your city kids that ain't real city kids. Right. They using somebody address to get up. I knew Evan had one of these. I had like three guys that is, you know, they was one of them. If they with their grandma, they in Oak Park. If they with this person, they in Chicago. If they with that person, they out south. Like, right. It's just that's how shit go. So I didn't know whether Evan was gonna go there or not, but we knew each other from playing travel ball, little pickup ball, small fry ball, all that little dumb shit. Playing in the YMCA. We, we was cool, but we wasn't cool like that. When we got to Emerson, he kind of saw like, oh no, he can go, go. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? And I saw he loved to score. So it was like, this works perfectly, bro. I ain't really into scoring because it's too many of y'all that want to do, for some reason, y'all don't like doing the other parts of the game. So I'm going to just do the other parts, but I get to sort of control shit as long as I keep you happy type shit. Mm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Evan was perfect because he, back then, all he did was shoot. He had a clip, right. like he just grabbing it, letting it go. Like Evan, he'll have 30 in the first half. We won't play the second half. Mm -hmm. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? But I'm just hounding the, as soon as the ball go through the net, I'm hounding whoever got a handle, I'm hounding it. I get all my points on breakaway. I just want to do layups, trick layups. Look at the crowd, you know, look at the crowd short as hell. I'm looking at the crowd. <laughs> I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm denying passes, being an asshole, man. But I'm short. I'm just running around super fast, like. And then for yeah. high school, we if he if the man would have went to Old Park with me though. That's the follow up. That's the follow up. Like where did the, where did he? What happened? Shorty went to St. Joe's. He pulled the city kid car. Went to St. Joe's. Slide over here. They took care of him. They hugged him a little tighter. You see what I'm saying? But I was so the part of me that threw everybody off. I had these same bridges to get to these schools that had the program that was the it program but I also had this pride to me that it was just like bro why y'all don't want to go to Old Park but y'all want to go to other schools and then pull up over here and kick it on y'all cars y'all want right. to you want to go to Old just come here like I get it nobody won I get it coach Al Strick ooh like shorty come hoop here like just come like y'all <laughs> be here all the time I know all y'all yeah. you know what I'm saying like that's but crazy. he wanted to go. He wanted to go behind. I get it though. When you see somebody, you know how I go at the crib. We don't see nobody get out of that. If it wasn't Michael Finley, ain't nobody coming home. There yeah. wasn't no coming home. Like we saw Michael Finley, and we saw like like Q. We'll see Q. We'll find him come home play. Y'all come playing the pro am and shit. Like kicking mm -hmm. with us. It's like all right. That's our little bridge. But it's like I wasn't into saying I'm gonna go. Oh, I gotta go to. Crane, Western House, like all my friends, like, man, we finna transfer, we finna go do whatever y'all gonna do. <laughs> y'all still gonna deal with me if y'all put me on this schedule, shorty. Like, hey, that's the funny thing that, about bro. high school. That used to be like, everybody, I'm about to transfer, I'm about to go here, I'm about to transfer, go here. Like, right. I'm like, bro, I can't do it. My brothers all went here, dog. I'm comfortable here. My grandma lived down the street, bro. I'm comfortable. Right. Like, why can't we just win here? Like, I know I be over your crib, bro. Like, I never got that. When I was in high school, that's how it was. I wanted all the hoopers to, to, to come to the hood and hoop with me, but they was all around the suburbs. And I was like, man, y'all y'all grew up and y'all was born here. Went to elementary school here, and then y'all just ain't gonna go to high school here? See, I was different. I, I, can't, I, I was all city, all city, all city, all day, right? Then, you know, grade school, went to Whistler, out in the hundreds then. Freshman year went to Brother Rice. That was the that was the curveball right there. Spent spent the year Brother Rice, bro, like playing against Finn. I didn't even get to go to varsity. It was sick. I'm like, nah. As soon as I ain't get to go to varsity, I want to transfer. I'm going back. Pops like, pops like, nah, bro. And I ain't had work. You about to you about to do this year. 
Right after that year was over, I was one of them kids. Like, I'm transferring. When my ass right to Whitney Young, I'm in the city again. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Lit. Lit. You at Oak Park, and you got to make a name for yourself because everybody around the city is loaded up. You got teams that's, that got the stars. And how was your competitive edge to be like, no, nah, I got to make a name for myself in the big city with all these big not time teams around me? It's crazy. It's it's gonna sound shallow or weird, kinda, but I literally wanted to play city teams to impress girls. <laughs> like, and that's the most honest I could keep it. G, like, I ain't never kept it that that a uh, that a thousand <laughs> with you. Like, no bullshit. My whole type of shit growing up was like, I had an issue with women liking the homies because they did street shit. Yeah. Or you like the, you like him cause he go to the school that ain't winning. Like they just disrespectful and bad. Like <laughs> you loving that. and I don't get it. Like I didn't understand that. I'm like, yeah. I you know what I'm saying? But I'm yeah. like, no, nah, we over here trying to make it over here. Like, we could kick it like that, like, you know what I'm saying? But right. bring everybody over our house, like we be having our house packed out now because we want the kids in our family to all get a taste of this. Like we all, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I, my, when I played in high school, it was like, I was in Coach Al, yeah, like, oh, come on, we gotta play them. We got, he like, you wanna play for them. Western House. Mm -hmm. He like, what is you, what is your thirst? I'm uh -huh. like, yeah. Get Crane, why you ain't putting Crane on the schedule? Cause I'm like, gee, these is all the teams that swear to God, I'm so nervous to come there. I'm like, nah, right. put them on the schedule and make it an away game. Make it an away right. game. You already know, I wanna go in they house. I wanna go in there. <laughs> so we beat Foreman, we took they pat down. They pat people down going like this with them and shit before they come out, they going like that. Right, they right. Yeah, no, oh, after we flushed him off, yeah, pat me down. Now, pay me, now, now everybody pay me down. What did y'all come out? I, I but I wanted to go and I wanted that because it was like that feeling, that fight or flight feeling. It's real when you go out west or you go out south and you playing that team that ain't supposed to lose to y'all because y'all technically supposed to be some suburb kids. When people think suburb kid, like I don't know what they make up on the piece of paper. I just never knew that piece of paper for it. Like yeah. I knew me and my brothers and I was like, we technically, like when we found out we were suburb kids, we was confused. <laughs> we didn't know what that was. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't know what it was. Like I put Chicago on my city town. I put that shit all the way up until like, I believe I got the seventh grade or sixth grade and they brought me into the office and was like double checking my addresses, called my parents, everything. Cause I kept putting Chicago, Illinois. And they like, all right, now he ain't making this many mistakes. Like why he keep putting Chicago? Yeah. But it's all I knew. I knew Bulls, yeah. I wore Bulls jerseys every day to school and shit. Like I wore Bears jerseys, like Blackhawks. Like that's what I wanted to wear all the time. Everything was Chicago. I go to my dad, my dad job at the school. He, he worked in the city. I'm in the city all the time. He, he doing his uh, insurance papers and shit, letting me play over here at the Golden Dome, where, like wherever he just could pull up. He just like, hey man. Columbus let Park. Him let him play. Where it up. Cause I could play anywhere. He, he was like, you shouldn't care. Like it's the same game. Ball, go in the rim, you stop the other team. Anywhere. Nothing changes. He said Anywhere, nothing. any coast, any hood, Field any ball. playground. Anywhere you got that gold in that ball, the same thing, same outcome come about if you if you, know you who you and, is. And, and, and it's and it's when people see you in that element, they understand like, bro, he ain't scared. He really love this shit. Like now I could be a fan of him. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I felt when I would go in the Western house and they stomping in the stands and all my teammates are shell shocked. Well, a couple of them was thirsty like me, where we wasn't really shell shocked. That's why we was winning. But you know, the, the rest of the bench is sort of like, oh, like, oh, it smell like weed in the crowd. Like, oh. Hey, this is why I tell people that the Chicago Public League, it, I don't know about now, but when we was coming through the Red West, bro, 
bar none, one of the toughest conferences in America. Forget the city in America, bro. It environments alone. Like, we can't have 7.30 games. Our game's at 3.15, 3.30 right after school because it's going up if that game at 7.30. It's too many people out of work. Too many people could make it there. It's going down, boy. It's always standing room. <laughs> the gyms ain't big enough. So it's going to be standing room only. It's going to be people. Every time you make a layup, you're going to fall into They might push your ass out that crowd. <laughs> I'm telling you, well, we didn't have lock, combination locks thrown at the bus, everything. The NBA crowd being back like that, like, calms me. But it kind of <laughs> takes a part of me away. Is that You know what I'm saying? Like, it professionally is dope. Cause that's how it should be. You shouldn't be able you to go from the jungle to the ballroom. That's what you know. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's like that energy. There's nothing like that. even in college. College took that energy away. A lot of my, you know, you know that feeling. Q. Hey, but look though, Sean. Listen to what I'm about to say. If you think about the NBA, what you just said, the only place that gets you anywhere close to what you're talking about is Utah, and that's why it's hard to win there. Cause they fans right there up on top. You kind of it's not like how what we talk about, but that's about as close as you get in the NBA, and that's, that's why like it makes it tough. Good. They right there. They right there. And you like how Russ was. You just feel like you want to turn. Like what's up, bro? <laughs> exactly. Like, what? That's why. And that's why it's probably more incidents there than anywhere else. Like you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like they right there, and it's I, all the way around. They right there. I just don't want them to change it. Like don't change it. Leave it. Like, leave it. Like, that's a good staple. Like, it's disrespectful in Utah. Cool. It's supposed leave. to be, yeah. Yeah, leave it. Everybody I, I mean, now, obviously not crossing that line, but I mean, like, in the lines of what we talking about, yeah. It's supposed, to be, like, it's supposed to be hostile territory. Cool. Point I, blank love period. It. I love it. I hate that the shit happened with uh, Detroit and what you call it, but, like, fans getting mad and just duh, like screaming and saying disrespectful shit like the shit that happened with Reggie Miller I feel like that was the same type of shit where you you people going at him and then Spike says something to Reggie and it just inspires Reggie to do something you know what I'm saying like I don't, yeah, I don't want you to take that away because that's part sometimes Russ may be having that bad game and shutting that fan up is what inspires 50. the game you know how they used to be like don't wake that monster up yeah, yeah, that oh, fan no. wake that monster up. <laughs> let that let, let that sleeping dog lie. <laughs> love that. I love that though. Like I, I love when it, you it's quiet on the it was well, it's loud on the road, and somebody just say the wrong thing, and we get inspired, and we make the next three that timeout hit, and you hear you hear yourself finally. You oh no, no y'all ain't gonna get quiet now. <laughs> First of all, like but you guys understand like the way the way we grew up, we we like. We thrive in that because yeah. we, we can't escape it when we growing up. When you don't matter where you at, when you go to the lunchroom, you got some weak shoes on, you about to get capped on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't escape it from the environment we come from. So everything getting us is the, okay, engage. Like, what's happening? I'm like, I'm used to like, okay, that's why I can crack jokes because I've been cracked on a hard. Cool. So now I got to be able to come back. You know what I'm saying? I, I learned how to fight because I got beat up and I got jumped. And so now I know that I could take that punch dead in the face. That like a lot of people ain't got hit dead smacking their face and their eyes water up that bridge of their nose and then they see, damn, oh, I'm all right. Like when that happened, that changed your whole perspective. The people that sitting out there right now, when they ain't never got punched, I'm talking about punched, punched straight in your fucking nose. <laughs> and your shit. When you take that and you feel it and you go through it, that changed your whole life, bro. I promise you. <laughs> hey, the reason it's funny to me, though, is because I, no lie, I've been on what, four teams now in the league? All four of the teams, I usually ask everybody once in a while, like, like we'll, you know, fights talk come up. And Mars be like, uh, like I'll be like, no, nah, I wouldn't do that. Mars be like, knock me. I'm over be like, I ain't never got knocked out. I'll be like, well, how many fights you been in? Right. Because <laughs> listen here. I done got knocked out before. I know exactly how I feel. I done got, I done got almost knocked out and stole my way out of a fight. What? Jumped. I done got, I done lost the one-on-one -on -one and then got stumped because I hit the flow and balled up. <laughs> I'm like, dog, I done had every version of a fight. That's why now I'm confident in doing it. You know what I'm saying? That's why now it'd be like, okay, I ain't going to overreact to no situation. I've been in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Like you were saying, I, I'm used to mine coming in and cracking a joke on me. So we cracking jokes. 
okay, we're going to say two, three jokes, and then we're going to get the hoop in. Back. But even when we on the court, you know, when we was hooping in New York, that's fun to me. Hey, hey, you got a little buddy over here with the braids. He ugly as hell. Hey, you throw it, throw it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it creates a confidence <laughs> within the team. It's part um... of the game to me. Hey, who, look, look at buddy. Who? Hey, he can't guard me till his braids get longer. Hey, come on, man. Come, set the screen. <laughs> who? Who him? Who him? Who got him? Yeah. What's his name? Hey, y'all put him on the scout. I just say anything, but it's all part of the game. Like, I love that confidence. Like, I love Chicago for doing that to me, Joe. Like, <clears throat> hey, for real. That's I how love, I-, I love where I grew up. Like, I'm so glad my parents had me right there and had me move over there, like, move over there and go in the old park and having the best of both worlds so I could get some of the city, but I also got a nice structure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got, I feel like shit. I got shit, I, I did something right, shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I look around at times, I'd be like, man, something happened the right way. You was kind of like the, the late bloomer. We didn't talk about this before. But what point in your mind did it click for you? Like, all right, I'm one of them, right? Like, first in your mind, what point did it click? But then when did everybody else start to take notice? Because I know that was two different things when you noticed and when everybody else noticed. Okay, like when I would start a game and it was no, I was no longer in the warm up with my team. Like, I was there. I knew the warm up, but I wasn't there. Like, I mentally was somewhere else. I, I was always, it was like, I had to score the first point. People didn't know I was going through this in my mind, but I'm like, I have to score the first point. It got to be what I want. Do I want a left-hand layup or a right-hand layup? Whatever it is, oh, yeah, make a miss. I'm doing what the fuck I want to do. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't here. care what y'all got set up. If you got a zone set up, cool. I'm going to see how your zone going to react to me just driving super hard left or super hard right. But I'm going to just do something that I want to do. Like, and I was able to, it, it helped me as a man to like walk and be able to look my coach dead in the eye and tell him exactly what I was doing. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know the play. Um, nah, he 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 been cheating all game. And I'll walk off. <laughs> but it wasn't like disrespectful. It was just like, he started realizing like he's seeing the game, the game slowing down. Yeah, mm-hmm. let me ask you this. When I was in high school, I used to daydream the game all day. I sleep and then you know through the through the day it's just like I'm daydreaming of what I'm gonna do all day today's again yeah, you used to you do walking, that walking through the mall hitting niggas with in and outs yeah you used yeah. to do that you used to daydream yeah. like I oh man tonight at the game I'm finna bop bop <laughs> and then then it's uh, it, it it wind up happening like that in the game when you get the opportunity you feel like oh here it come yeah. or what I daydream. <laughs> It was way more, th- I was way more thirsty for the daydreaming and then doing it in the game. I was thirstier to do that in high school. I wish I never lost that. Yeah. That's what I say. I did it a lot in high school. It was just like, I don't know, because we have school and stuff like that, that it makes you daydream more or, 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 or concentrate more on the game. But I used to go to sleep or I'd take a nap and, you know, you were asleep and your dream would be about the game. And then when you get in the game, it's like deja vu. Or, or you'll jump in your seat, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in class, realize, like, oh, I'm full blown. <laughs> the whole thing, everybody turn around, you try to play it all, like the slob on the beat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you be like, oh, man, I'm I'm lit. But you, in your mind, it's confirmation, like, at least I'm in the right place. Right, Y'all yeah. don't realize that. I, I just say at 40, but yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let me ask you this though. So, you know, being from the from the crib, the 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 everything that we got, the history that we got of, of basketball, when you when you get to your senior year and you find out you about to be McDonald's All American, like what's that like when you when you get that that piece of information and you know the, you know what I'm saying, the history of guys that's been in that game, what it means. And kind of like, you know, when you make that game, you kind of expect it. You, that's kind of like a rite of passage. Like most guys from that game make the NBA, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So what did that feel like to you when you got that call? Um, it was dope. It was, uh, cause that's the first time they do your ESPN. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like, so it was going crazy, but it was like, I don't know. It's still, I only could live it through my dad. Like when I saw my dad emotionally proud talking about it to people, yeah. like it was real. He was proud of your accomplishment. He was like on some like, he was on the phone all day with people. Like, 
I ain't never seen him tweaking like that. Like, he <laughs> was tweaking about it, like running it back over and over. But he was looking and he was having moments where he looking at me, but he looking at me like, damn, nigga, you really, <laughs> you did like, it. You really going yeah. through it. Like, you going. But he kept looking at me. I'm pop, what you like, what you looking at, dog? <laughs> like, but he was so happy about it that he was just telling me, like, I just, I'm just, you know, I'm proud of you. Like, you doing it. Like your grades good, I ain't had to worry about you. I ain't gonna have to pay for school, buddy. Like we like you, <laughs> you, you and him. Like yeah. I like I, I like what's going on. But he was just like proud, you know. You just see the proud feeling. Like yeah. I saw it, and through him being so proud, my mama got proud because she don't know what's going on. Right, yeah. right, but right. Now, but now people running up to her like. Mr. Shumpy, your son going to the NBA, and, and she's just sort of like, bro, this is real? Like, this nigga been right. telling me since he was four that he right. want to go to the league, but now people are randomly coming up to me without That's him being it. here. See my last name, teachers coming in, and uh, uh, people at her job, they coming in because she was an art instructor. So people coming in, popping in, like, hey, man, that's your son? This is this your boy? She like, yeah, but... But then she started realizing, like, boy, everybody talking about you. Like, my grandmama was, you know, still there, but she was like, no, nah, this is like, you do that? She like, all of them was the Jordan, all the best that went through there. She like, you good, you, yeah. She like, yeah, you in the door, you good. She like, yeah, don't, don't give all your friends your shoes. They give you some free shoes, keep your shoes. Don't start doing that. Like, don't start doing that. You go get the tweak and you ain't got no money. Don't start. Don't start. <laughs> but my thing about the McDonald's game, that was the one that the best of the best every year was going. And then I wanted to be one of the ones that was from Illinois. So that was the one all-star game. When I came into it from practice to the game, I went super hard. Because that was, the, like, the first time I was on TV, the first time I could get, like, showcase where everybody could really see me. So that one's the one that I went hard, but the rest of them, I used to be like, come on, man, here, y'all can have it. Shoot all the rocks you want. Let me get a dunk or two and I'm gonna get out your way. For me, because I wasn't ranked, I never had that game marked on my calendar. I didn't watch the McDonald's game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even know Jordan had a game. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I would watch stuff, but I was like, these is all the, you know, East Coast teams, they get to play in the garden. I am ain't even putting together this a Jordan all-star. I'm like, this is some camp shit, some five-star shit. They all got A, B, C, D camp, all this shit that I wasn't getting invited to. So I'm like, it all seemed fairy tale to me. I'm just like, yeah. I got to kill whoever in front of me type thing, right? My junior year, going into my senior year, I killed the AAU circuit. They all talking about me now. Now they starting to consider all this McDonald's stuff. Everybody like, we want to see who he's going to be. Let, let's see if he's really that good. He got the attention now. So now all these coaches is coming. We lose two conference games, right? And I'll never forget this. Adam Taylor, uh, my teammate at the time, stands up and say, Cause I was complaining. I'm like, we need to do this. So we need to do that. Or y'all complaining that I'm passing y'all. Like, I don't want to play with y'all. Like I'm trying to shed. Like he dropped the pass and he say, man, stop with all the fucking excuses. Everybody else got their superstar. They just go out there, get 50. We win. And that's it. Like go get 50 then. Like stop passing to them. Like stop passing to me if that's what it takes, but just go get 50 then. If you that good. They challenge you. And I sat in that locker room after everybody left. I sat there and I was rocking back and forth like this. And I sat there for a long ass time. And I never forget, I called my grandma. She was like, you gonna be as good as you wanna be, but you like have, you don't like leaving people behind, baby. And that's okay. But one day you gonna have to leave because they not you. Yeah. Like, she was like, it's just not that many people get blessed with it. But if you want to do it, you going you are gonna have to leave some people. Like that's the only way this life works. Yeah. She said that shit, and I sat there for a long time. I didn't answer my phone for a while. And then the next game, I had like 30. And then the game after that, I had like 35. <laughs> after that, it was like 28, 12, and eight. Yeah. And then it was like oh, everybody was just like, yeah. But it was like, it got to the point where at the end of the game, if you tried to walk off the court, I'll look at my coach like, let me dunk this. And he'll be like, yeah, I'll 
go in that bitch dunk, boom. But I would just, everybody, I wanted, I just was like, dog, I'm, I'm like, I am, I'm, cause my whole life, you know, back then you had coaches that was like, you're that good, but you don't want to play with the team. So you're hard to coach, you're uncoachable. I didn't want those taglines. I had a father, like I was very obedient to what my dad, if he said, hey man, you need to listen to your coach. If you should be good enough to be able to do that, you can have 12 assists too. You know, you could still do all the right things, always get back and all. And I'm complaining, I'm doing, you know, I, I was starting my superstar bicker. Mm. Like, they, they, I threw the pass, yeah. And he was like, after a while, he was just like, gee, just don't violate the coach, but you can find ways to win within. But when my grandma, when Adam Taylor challenged me, and then my grandmama told me, like, you gonna have to, like, if you want to be great, you gonna have to just leave some people, G. Like, it, it can't be both. You ain't finna, you, can't no man carry a team up a mountain and all that. She like, you gonna have to go up there yourself and then throw something down to bring them up. But mm -hmm. you gonna have to go yourself type of, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, once she created that for me, like, after that, it was just like, bro, I don't care who in front of me. I don't, like, you wasn't there. Like, you wasn't. I left the. I was at the gym on Friday night. All my homies went to that school dance, and you wasn't there. Like <laughs> I was in the gym, y'all wasn't. I was like, mm. I want blood. I, I just and it became very uh aggressive. Like Obsessive. it was an aggressive time for me. Yeah, it was like I was constantly screaming at my brother and my my father in the crowd. Like I would I would just talk to them because I got a technical because I dunked on somebody and I got a tech. And Ari told me, just like, just talk that shit to me, bro. Just talk that shit to me. Like, don't stop talking that shit, though. Like, don't stop. He like, don't stop. What you doing right now? Like, he was giving, him and my dad was giving me money. If I got a dunk, I got half my number. If I dunk on somebody, I got 32. If I dunked on somebody and won, I got 50. Bro, I had bread. <laughs> <laughs> my brother was mad as hell. He like, man, I ain't finna work extra hours, but I do want the man to keep killing. I want the man to keep killing, so we, we got a bet going. Cause, but they ain't know I could even dump that consistently yet. You know, they ain't know I was really gonna be pulling it. They said it thinking I was gonna have one or two this season type of thing. Like, he might have some nice ones, but. Shit, I, after I, my I, sophomore year, my cousin wasn't betting me no more how many dunks I'm getting the game. Five, <laughs> he five, was five, like, bro, you broke, now. that seeds you broke, he went from $100 a dunk to, hey, we gotta go all the way to 50 to 25. You getting too many. This I'm getting like four dunks a game. That's a hundred. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> when you decide to come out, could it been anybody else? Other than Georgia Tech? Mm, yeah, it was supposed to be North Carolina, for real, for real. When North Carolina first knocked at the door, my, like, you got to think, it, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge Jordan fanatic. Yeah. So right, right, right. I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at it like, if I could go there, I could, you know, whatever they was doing there got it good. You know what I'm saying? But that's when I'm naive. I ain't even knowing it's just like, once I got to North Carolina and did all the visits and everything, and I realized, like, man, all these courts the same, man. <laughs> Different colors, but they all the same. You know what I'm saying? Some of them is cleaner than other floors. You know what I'm saying? It's more grip. But I started, like, I wasn't as, like, geeked out no more because I was like, gee, if I go here, just who I am as a person, if I go here to North Carolina, one, y'all not promising me I'm gonna play point guard. Y'all trying to throw me at three man and two just because I'm capable. Like, but I'm like, I don't even see the game the right way unless I'm at the top of the key, bro. Like, yeah. work with me type shit. Just work with me. And uh, Georgia Tech, Paul Hewitt had already said, oh man, I like a big point guard. You playing point guard. You go here four years, four years at point guard. I'm like, perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What you looking for? And North Carolina, they was kind of like telling me, you know, Roy Williams was just like, uh, you know, <laughs> he, he already signed Larry Drew. Okay. Larry Drew the second, okay. And Larry Drew was at, you know, at that time, it was, he was that man. He you know what I'm saying? That name, his brand already, with his pop being in the league, he understood things a lot of us didn't understand yet. Mm -hmm. He had the learning curve. So to them, he was the better point guard fit. And I would have been a great two combo where it's like when he's tired, he go down, he mom play point for a little bit, but mostly mom was supposed to be the two guard. And I, I was just more comfortable with the point guard shit. Then I took all my visits and 
they had it too good, bro. I can't have it that good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My personality. Time for Hill too plus for you, huh? It's too, it was too player. Like, I'm yeah, like, that'd be scary for you. Like, I know it was, it was like that for me. Like, I, I committed to St. John's because I was like, I right, it's a black coach. He might relate to me more. I see a little bit, few more black people. Yeah. But then when you see them North Carolinas and you see something them Kentuckys and you be like, man, I'm from the hood. This is a little too clean. <laughs> this is a little too clean for me, right? It wasn't even, it wasn't even the clean on the campus. Like, yeah. I understood, like, this this ACC, no matter what I pick right now, it's gonna be plush as far as facility, yeah. campus, upper echelon. I'm gonna get a good degree. I'm straight either way I go. Yeah. But when I'm in, had it good. I'm talking about go eat. Everybody know who you are. You ain't paying bills. Trust me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Moggs was talking to me about doing my papers and shit. I'm like, bro, what the? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dog, I haven't even, you know what I mean? I'm talking about these just random students just coming up to us just because they can't believe we finna go to North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yeah. dog, I started thinking about it. Like, the only place that wasn't like that, Georgia Tech, all the kids that had work to do. Nobody really, like, when I came to the football game, they rocked with me because they was like, he cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, <laughs> you know a couple girls going to be like, you know who is boy? <laughs> but it wasn't, like, <laughs> it wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, big size, like, Yvonne, come here. Yvonne, come here. It wasn't all that. It was everybody was just sort of doing their thing. Like you said, black school, you know what I'm saying? Well, it wasn't a black school, but it's a. It's surrounded by Atlanta, Atlanta, so it's a black school. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> right here. Look how I'm used to shit looking like. And it was a feel where it was like, I'm finna have to grind here. Like, I'm still, it's still the mud. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. When I work for Turner, it's right across the street from Georgia Tech campus. I see it now. I synced it. That was relatable for me. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. stepping across, like, I got campus where it's like, yeah, but I could walk right across the street and it's right back to normal life, normal speed. Everybody got something to do. Uh, saw a lot of black successful people here. Like I saw women that own stores. Like I, that's first. That was the first for me. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't walking into no black owned. It was black owned everything. Like right. I was like, this is dope. Like I'm like, I'm like, this is like Chicago without the accent and a bunch of land. Like mm -hmm. to go with your crib. Like we don't have no land, but I'm like, if we had land, we probably would kick it just like this, bro. Like that's yeah. how I felt. So mm -hmm. when I could relate those two, I was just like, gee, I'm a, and you gonna promise me point guard? It was a no brainer for me. Like they lied to me and told me they had a sports broadcast program. No, took me to the CNN building, lied to me, everything. They ain't had nothing. <laughs> I'm science, technology, and culture major, man. Come on, man. That's basically communications with a fancy name. But that worked out for me because I shit, I like to talk my way through shit anyway. I like to talk about experiences, storytelling, all that shit. So it worked out. I don't even remember you getting hurt in college. But how was that when you got hurt in college? When it happened, it was right before I was supposed to go hire an agent and do all that. So... I think it kind of made uh, NBA people probably looked at it like he's scared, like he ain't ready to leave. Like, yeah. Because everybody, all the homies was like, one year we up. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I remember talking to them, they like, you not, you not leaving. Like, you show, what you doing, man? Like, <laughs> what, what you doing, man? We all supposed to be leaving. We all diving in. What are you doing? Like, what are you, what you doing? And I was, we had got our head beat in all year, bro. And I don't like losing. I'm like, gee, who goes to the league on the 12, 19, like, so that what made you focus more your junior year and just come in like, yeah, I'm finna kill this year. My sophomore year, it was like I was I was trying to win. I wanted some of that tournament. I ain't getting no tourney action. I needed that. Then they made sure we played Evan and them. They made sure me, Gotti, and D Faye fouled out. You know what I'm saying? Ohio State there, stay a little way into the, you know what I'm saying, to the foe and all that. That's <laughs> You know, you know, I ran into Evan again. Gee, it's cool, you know. I fouled out, Gandhi fouled out, and Derek Favors fouled out, but it's cool. Like, we ain't, gonna, <laughs> we ain't gonna hang our hat on it no more longer, but it was like, I wanted to win. I wanted that winning feeling. And then after that, 
uh, I had to get a cleanup and I was like, I don't want to do the workouts and shit without being able to test how I could physically test. So I, uh, I waited, I did the junior year and that's why my junior year, like you said, it was team wise. It was the thing my grandmother created in my head again. Team wise, I kind of knew I don't have the horses to go as far unless I inspire it or, you know, spark it. I knew I had a couple of young guns and Glenn Rice and Brian Oliver that could get hot and they had the Buddy Hill gene where whether y'all believe it or not, they believe they that good and I need them to believe they that good. See, a lot of yeah, people don't the understand. confidence need to stay high. A lot of people don't understand that. Like, there's the all. players that, yeah, they may not be that good. Yeah, I know you ain't the best. In their head, they are I need that them to good. stay there. Yeah. But if you have somebody like a Rondo or a Jason Kidd, then they become even better than they think they are. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because somebody is able to gas them and put them in successful spots. And they have that conscience that it's like, I didn't miss the last shot. Who saw that? Yeah. <laughs> like, I that's missed. That, I didn't know I missed. That's that short-term memory. Real talk. I thought you I hit. <laughs> that's what all shooters and all scores. The last thing I remember memory. was looking in the crowd, bro. I don't know. That, I thought that went in. I airballed. Damn. I thought that was good. Like, But you need that because there's a lot of players that are too conscious of, I missed my last two. I shouldn't shoot this one. You know what I'm saying? Like I ran into that problem plenty of times playing this three and D role where it's like, damn, I done shot at 04 two games in a row. So shoot it another four, five times, bro. You need to shoot 10 of these a game to know how many you make. Shit. I ain't never had that problem. But see, Just I had that so problem. I had, I had Mellow where it's like, I got Mellow, I got Amari. I got, you know what I'm saying? I came yeah. in at point guard and then I had to play two and three and now I'm, everybody's talking about my percentage from three and I'm like, bro, since when? I ain't never come in the league shoot threes. The knock on me was shoot threes and now y'all evaluating me on how many threes I make, corner threes a game, like off of Melo's random shot clock passes that he don't want to throw me, but he's like, I got to because I ain't got nothing right now. Yeah. I'm like, I'm getting evaluated off that. So it was, for me, it was like every time I get up, uh, try and get your hands on the rim. Ah, oh, shot clock went off. Damn. But if I had the Buddy Hill gene, I don't care. Throw me whatever you want to throw me. I'll shoot that too. <laughs> like, and it's like after a while, you could catch fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a man. Do your draft? Did you uh work out for a bunch of teams? Hell yeah, I went on a world tour, boy. Who did you, you think that no, you... No, 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 you can't even talk to him like that because you don't know powder like that, bro. You ain't like us. He's one of them, he's one of them silver spoon cats that had a couple of meat and shump, wasn't going nowhere, going to eating steaks and sitting what? down, being wine and oh, dine, talk hey. to. Hey, hey, talk to, he ain't got to do no workouts. Look, they was turning me down. Exactly. We can't. We can't get in the same gym with them. In the gym, bro. You supposed to be thirteen spots better than me. Put me in the gym with these hey, miles. Bro. Hey, we was at. The, we was at the uh the NBA workout thing, and you know how they do the stress test. They put the stickers on yeah. you. You got to run on the treadmill. So I'm looking at Q now run on that treadmill. Man, them boys run on that treadmill and run the whole time. I'm like, damn, them boys in shape. So I get on that mug. <laughs> Man, that mug looked up. Look, I said, hey. I'm about to get off. He said, no, nah, a few more, a few more seconds. I said, I'm about to jump off. <laughs> and I jumped off that motherfucker. That boy Q said, damn, d you did like two minutes. <laughs> bro, you know how you supposed to get your whole joint up there. I'm sitting there, we all standing together. d was like, he said, they let that thing. He said, hey, man. He turned around like he holding on to the ball. Like, hey, man, I'm about to get off. He was like, well, well, no, you need to go a little bit. He said, I'm about to get off. He said, <laughs> turn around. That man hopped off the thing. He like, no, nah, I ain't doing all this. <laughs> Real talk. And they still put whatever they had to put. Let it. Yeah, they, 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 look, what, what, you know what the doctor's going to do. They ain't about man, man, six, nine, size, 20 in shoes. He's standing there with big ass hands. They ain't about to do nothing. They like, yeah, go ahead. He say, he like, as he's stepping off, he taking the things off. He like, no, nah, I ain't doing this <laughs> Oh, that, was, them, but that was the first time I ever did the stress test. That, that was looking weird. I'm like, man. Then I got on. I was like, shit, that shit hard. <laughs> first time too, we just did it. We look. That was what I'm saying. But that's what he talking about. That's that. When you when you in that top fourteen, 
they felt like they ain't had to do much and everything was solidified. Like, I didn't even know. Like, bro, when I got there and they showed me that there was a draft wall, I'm like, bro, who makes the list? Show me, bro. I was, they'll tell you, I, no, no lie. Please ask Donnie Walsh how I acted during my draft workout with the Knicks, bro. What you did? That's what I wanted to ask you. What, what, what happened? I lost it. I lost my mind, bro. I I completely lost it. I completely forgot where I was. I was yelling it out. I'm like, no, because he's supposed to be better than me, and I don't, I'm sick of this shit. I've been going all around. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I lost. I'm going flying all around the country. You want him? You want him? Show me, bro. Real, real talk, because I'm not going back home, bro. So come on. <laughs> I'm all that. One-on-one. -on -one. Look, we shooting the threes, doing all that. I'm shooting the three. I'm making 23 out of 25. I don't do that from three, to tell you the truth. I don't. <laughs> like, I'm not even, I can't even sometimes get my mind to say I'm about to shoot 25 shots from this spot by myself over and over because I'm working on it. It's hard for me to do that. Well, it was hard. At 21, it was extremely hard because it's like, this ain't basketball. I've never seen an open shot, bro. When you that guy, you don't get no open shot. So when am I going to stand here with no competition and just shoot? Mm -hmm. I didn't even, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't understand the NBA game yet. I ain't know Melo was taking the double team every day. Right. I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know they weren't going to let my man play ball at all. I, I didn't all. Know. All at these all. open shots start swinging. I'm like, damn, this is yeah. different. Game. He's a scoring machine. You can't leave him off. And then sometimes <laughs> he's scoring it whether they double or not. He just shooting over the double team. Like, yeah. That's when you gotta be a little selfish. <laughs> but you you start seeing shit like that. And when I was in them workouts, like I lost it in New York. Um me and Josh Shelby got into it. You know, uh, me and Josh Shelby got cool because we fought in our draft workout with the Bulls. <laughs> like, that's why we was cool. Because he wanted it bad. And he went, he did a, a, a move and like, you know, he little chicken wing me, but I don't be tripping. So then I do, I go by, you know, and I make a move and for real, for real, I it, it seemed as if I was going to score with my left and use my shoulder to hold him off. And I just two foot and exploded through and put it right in his face to where he had to go like this, but he ended up getting caught. No, I remember laying the ball up, I'm running back and I just feel somebody just on my neck breathing. He said, hey, we better have to put them gloves on, shorty. <laughs> <laughs> the next couple rebounds, we done got into it, we throwing balls, we done Got ready to start fighting, Joe. And the Bulls coaches loved it. They loved it. They was, they was like, no, 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 it's good. That's good. That's good. And we, like, after that, it was like, dog, I love this man, bro. We got in the locker room. Everybody was, like, thinking, like, we finna have to calm the tension down. We was already laughing. Ben, man, he like, shorty, I just, I'm just saying, shorty, like, I'm trying to make the league. I can't let them think I'll let somebody do Go through my face, like you twenty minutes. Like, we just, we was just like so. Like me and Josh was come from the same type of perspective of. I left. I hired an agent, and I told everybody this: is what I'm doing. So I'm doing it. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fully committing to it. So if somebody in the way, and his, I gotta get him out the way. Uh, you know, when you with your girl, they'd be like, your love language. If his hoop language. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Is fight on this? We fighting because we fight for it. <laughs> right. Yes, we is gonna fight for this this one spot left in the league. We're fighting for this. Straight spot. up. So tell me this though. First, did you know that you, the Knicks were gonna draft you? I did. But after that workout, Phoenix had the 13th pick. I worked out for Phoenix and I caught Jimmy Fedex slipping. I don't know why he worked out with me slipping. So I'm thinking if Phoenix don't, I'm thinking Phoenix don't take me, I need a backup plan type of thing. But I told my agent, I think Phoenix gonna take me. It'd be hard for them not, somebody would have had to come do something better. And I don't think they worked out as good. I'm talking about the big man was doing the, the, the uh, 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 they picked the ball up off the block, drop step dunk drill. They doing that big man finished with seventeen. I go up there, throw twenty one of them bitches. Yeah, you, you uh, know how you know how we do that, D. Uh, yeah, uh, you know that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Back in the glass on some Kenya Martin shit. Ah! 
Oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, dog, I done wild out. It ain't no way they let something slip in. Hey, up. look, this is a sidebar, but this is just an example of why I love to talk my shit about our city and our guard deals. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can go Shannon Brown, you can go Corey Miguel, you can go T.A., you can go Shump, you can go d Row. Everybody like this, and everybody with the shit, and everybody throwing that. <laughs> I'm talking about, you already know. <laughs> Vertical, however you want to do it. We getting up there. We, we, bro, we, 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 we all hard. I love that. I love it. But that, that was, that's what I wanted to bring. Because I'm like, gee, all, like, once you got to the workout and you saw everybody shoot their 25 from his, every spot, you see everybody doing their ball handling. You like, we all got the same shit. Because y'all asking us to do a drill. None of this is going to get it there. What y'all need to see is when we start hooping, who is like that? I'm like, yeah, I ain't going to be quiet because I ain't like that, bro. I'm, I'm not a quiet person. And once, uh, you know, you get a somebody, you just find somebody to inspire you. And because Jimmy Fredette, because they, he didn't know I was looking for him on the schedule. Like, he didn't even know what was going on. I'm like, because y'all didn't give me a game, I'm thirsty. And I was thirsty as hell. I know he was looking like, damn, my double snatch cross move ain't work. Like, that worked all year. Like, nah, G. Nah, 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 nah. I'm 6'4". I'm glassing that, too. You get to the cup, I'm glassing that. I'm glassing. I need it. I know when I got to the league, I was surprised that my defense was as good on that level as it was coming out. Like, oh, I can actually guard some of the best and, like, hold my own. You came in, you was defender. You was one of the ones you can always play if you can guard somebody. How did you feel when you got to the league and your defense was like just like that good? And you was like, oh, okay, this is the highest level. And I, I can kind of, I can see it, hold my own. My assistant coach in, uh, at Georgia Tech, named Charleston Young. Charleston always, we called him CY. CY, I'd be like, uh, you got to get your hootie hoop points. You, you one of the best hootie hoop players I ever seen. And when he say hootie hoop points, he talking about you got that mod that he, he, he say he say he can't even use the bathroom with his left hand. You got him and he on the left side. Ooh, 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 ooh. Get get that mod and go go dunk right, that right. Hoop points. Hootie hoop points. That bad pass. You know he finna throw that bad pass over the zone. You need to rev your engine up. Get that deflection. Run through it. Dunk that fast. You need that. Uh, you need your four free throws at the end of the game. You know, you're going to need your one steal that you know you're going to get because you see him do the same move, but we ain't going to take it until you need it in the second half. Don't reach for it until you need it. Then take that move. So he he, he thinking that's his go-to shit. And I'm waiting on some scouting report shit. Like, that would be my collection of having hootie hoop points. So it's like, if you could focus, if you could focus your mind on, on getting your quick little you know, defensive points like that, I'm going a, I'm to a stretch out a game knowing I'm going to have 25 because 15 of it is scoring and then the other 10 is just playing hard and being a fan of whoever I'm guarding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when I played D. Rose, though, and it was my first time actually going at D. Rose because he lost one – no, I lost uh, the year in the Christmas tournament, and I believe he – wasn't he didn't play the game. He had to play another game somewhere else with a different AAU team. Yeah. And I missed playing him in a different tournament. So it was like the two times I was supposed to see him and everybody was sort of revving it up. I didn't see him. Right. So we played him at the garden and this is the MVP D Rose. You know what I'm saying? When I had stole it from him a few times, deflected his pass off of the ball. Um, and then he just, he revved his move up a couple of times and I was able to cut it off. And don't get me wrong, he still was coming off the screens that he needed to come off. He gonna, no get, game. His <laughs> he gonna get his floaters, he gonna get his couple of drives where it's like, nigga, Iman wasn't around. Like, transition, <laughs> transition and he the fastest thing on the floor. It ain't nothing nobody could do. He just gonna beat whoever that is and get his points. Then he gonna get his couple of threes because we gonna do rotating. Like, he plays basketball the right way. So after the game, though, when I knew, because I don't gauge it off his point total, I, I need your point. If you if your percentage was down and your point total is below your average and I got my win, I did a good job. Yeah. Because the superstars, they will run it to death until they get their average. You know what I'm saying? But to do that, as long as I made you shoot a lower percentage 
or do things you're not accustomed to, you're going to be tired at the end of the game and I can get this win. So that's how I really gauge it. You know what I'm saying? When I was able to do that with D Rose and we won on Easter, I was like, gee, I might be one of the nicest to ever guard the ball. I was like, I might be. Because I'm like, I don't watch this man make people look really, really bad. Like, yeah. they don't know where the ball at at times. He moving so fast. Mm-hmm. The yeah. angles that he's attacking, how he's getting to your hip, but then separating. Then that jump stop. <laughs> yeah, that pro hop. Oh my God. It was like, pro hop crazy. And it's like, he'll pro hop and then dunk you. Yeah. Knock it back and put it on his name. Like, yeah, I'll put like, it on his name I'm if you, like, you play it with him. Yeah, man, it, it get nasty. So it's like, when I saw that, I'm like, bro, one, to know we both from the same type style basketball and to know, though we have a different game, to know that it translated to the league competitively. When Mellow Nim was looking at me like, damn, like, you really sliding with this man. Yeah, like, we want you like, out here to go to like, war. No, we not trapping it. Let's jump guard that man. Straight up. <laughs> Bring him to the foxhole. I, I can sit here with him. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's how Melo was looking at me, and that gave me that confidence to be me. That's what I want to ask you, right? Because I, I got to, you know, see something that. How did you feel, like, when you get, like, you get drafted, right? Now you in New York. Like, you know what I'm saying? You already know that's a whole different beast and energy of itself. Yeah. But then... Not only that, like you a rook, you know what I'm saying? You hit the scene and you 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 getting the you getting the play, like you a fan favorite. The fans rocking with the city has embraced you, is what I'm saying. Then like just what you saying, where you got mellow, you got your teammates stay rocking with you. You start the Knicks tape. Just talk about how it is to be a Nick and how it is to play New York, because you got a taste of it when it was when it was semi. It wasn't like great, but it was good. It was a lot of fun for me. I think it was some of my best years playing basketball, you know what I'm saying? Like my learning curve was a lot. Um, that was my first major injury. Um, mm-hmm. Coming into it though, I think that our staff did a pretty good job initially. Once the coaching change and shit happened, that was in like year three, once Woody got out of there. Then it started getting a little iffy with how to take blows in the media to where the media didn't go real to us. Yeah. Especially for somebody young like me. Like I at first when they was telling me about an article, I was like, and, and they had, had to get me to realize, like, whoa, 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 this is New right. York. <laughs> they go ask you this tomorrow. You better have an answer, bro. Like, <laughs> or they gonna talk about this all week. I'm telling you. But to me, I'm like, shorty. Y'all ain't won shit. So what I, if we lose a game, it ain't like y'all had all the I'm like, sure y'all got danced on. That's how I was looking at it. I'm like, y'all yeah. booed me when I was drafted. I really don't care. They was right. like train, like they had to give me the, you know, the proper training. Like, gee, no, nah, luckily for you, you play with Melo and Amari, and Melo shouldered so much of it. Mm. Amari shouldered so much of it. Tyson wiggling answers that I could piggyback on and just say, oh yeah, like what he said type shit. You know what I'm saying? I could do that and the pressure was lifted in a way. Then I had Jason Mm -hmm. Kidd, I had Rasheed Wallace, guys that stepped in and sort of deflected. You know what I mean? I just wish that we had that, like I, I, I always, I never understood why the Knicks don't how they did with that 90s team. Like, why y'all don't keep a team for long enough to see if they good? Like, just see if they good. Get them all contracts and just see if they good. So it's not even as easy, especially now. Cause it's like now, like with y'all, t- that team y'all had was a chance to do it. Like when they got Melo and they had Amari and they had a chance to build on that. When we got rid of Steve Novak, he putting on the belt, you know? Yeah, yeah. the discount funny. double check. Like, yeah, yeah but, but see that was, that's the part. Like when you get two guys that were, you know, they were in the prime of their career, they were superstars in the league and Amari, he raised his hand and said, I'm not afraid to go to New York. I'll go. And he went there and he was holding it. He was putting it down. Then they went and they, you know, they traded like half the team to get Melo there. If they would have kept them boys, could you imagine if they kept them boys and Melo came in the summer and they still had Wilson and Gallo and all of them Felton that they traded away and they still got all of that 
And then they just add mellow to that. No, I can't be American with that because they would have drafted my ass. That shit would have ended my whole life. Fuck you talking about Q that was about way in, goddammit. But no, listen, what they lacking <laughs> is the superstar stepping up saying, I'll go there and let's build and let's do it. Because everybody looking at it, like, like KD had a quote. He came out like, I'm not about to base my legacy on coming there and scooping them out of infamy after they've been doing what they've been doing for every day. And if I go there, my whole legacy going to be hinged on whether I was able to revive that or not. If I didn't, I'm, 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 I ain't on nothing. Like, nah, I don't want that pressure. I'm about to go chill out. That was the thing about Melo and Stat. They were able to do it. They had the makeup to where not only could I go out here, I could ball on the court and do what needed to be done. But like you said, they were able to shoulder and shield you from stuff in the media and stuff because they were they were able to deal with it. Like Melo dealt with that media and all of that stuff in New York, even all the way until his exit when Phil Jackson was doing them bogus and all that stuff. Like Melo dealt with that thing better than anybody I could have even envisioned doing. It. So like you know what I'm saying? Like that's the type of players that the Knicks have to try and get to get that thing back right. They got to get superstars that ain't got sensitive skin and that's really gonna be able to handle New York and everything that come with it. With the next one of them years, you tore your ACL. Uh, my for my rookie year, end of my rookie year, going into the playoffs, my first playoff game. I, I he rose to his, and twenty minutes later, I tore mine. Mm. I heard a story is your your wife. That's when y'all got close, and she took care of you while you tore your ACL. She came when I had a meniscus cleanup that yeah. I got done at the end of my second year, and. Uh, she, uh, she had, we had just shot for her, her styling company. Cause I had finally just dealt with her friend zone shit. Like she had tried to friend zone me the whole time. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't going for it. And then after a while I was just like, all right, like I don't care no more. So I was like, but I was comfortable. Like I'll talk about females in front of her, whatever. Like we really was just kicking it. And, um, uh, we did that. And then a week later she was hitting me trying to see where I was at. And then I'm like, I'm at the crib. She's like, where at? And I'm like, on 148th and St. Nick. And she's like, man, stop playing. Like, type shit. Like, quit playing. I'm not for real. I'm at the crib. You know, I got a brownstone at all. I'm like, I'm, you know, I be chilling. And she like, no, I'm down the street from your house. You serious? I'm like, yeah. She's like, why are you living in Harlem? Like, she was just bugged out with it. But uh, she came and I, I wasn't ready for her to come near, though, because I was just like, Gee, you supposed to live in Miami. Like, I didn't even know you was in New York right now. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't talking to her like that. So I like hobbled down the stairs. You know, I'm on one leg and shit. I ain't feel like grabbing my crutches. I'm hopping down on the one leg. My brother had just went back to Chicago to see his son. So I'm like, I ain't finna tell the man he can't see my nephew. You know what I'm saying? That's weird. Like, I, I need help. But as long as I got, you know, I could cook my damn self. I could make some struggle meals and get myself through three days, you know? Yeah. But she came over and was like, Ain't nobody taking care of you. What's going on? Like, going in, like, were you just here by yourself? Like, you supposed to be a Nick. Like, I'm looking like Shorty, you don't even sing the anthem for us. What you don't hit me with the Nick shit. And then she changed the whole schedule, you know, pushed some stuff back, moved some stuff around, and held me down for a couple of days. She was like coming over, cooking and shit, making sure I was straight. Uh she would go get me some ice for my game ready and shit. Uh, she will just like literally just kick it over there because she was already in Harlem with like uh, people. Yeah, I've been together since then, huh? And we've been locked in. So. Straight up, man. That's a beautiful thing, man. Hey, this is what I want to know. So you got traded you to got the, traded uh, to a contender. How was leaving right. Melo to LeBron? Like how how was that going? Like leaving New York and then you going to Cleveland, but. The caveat is that you, like you saying, you going to a contender, you got a chance to win, you going to play with LeBron. How was that? I remember being in Memphis and being so confused because it didn't feel real. And I had friends and family that was like, boy, you finna play with LeBron? Like, oh, you finna get a ring? Like, y'all, oh, oh, man, oh, oh, oh. Right. And I'm like, do you realize what I said to that man while he was over there in Miami? Like, that man might not like me too much, Joe. They like, boy, I don't know what you're talking about. If you're going over there, it's because Braun picked you. So he wants you over there. So yeah. you forget about that shit. Like, that's how they looking at it. But I'm looking at it like, bro, my bet is Carmelo and I get it. They friends. But y'all arch enemies, bro. 
Right. Uh, I kind of feel like a female in between right now. Like, <laughs> I ain't really like you. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, gee, I kind of feel weird, but I'm my loyalty. So I even told Brian, we laugh about it. Like, it's funny now. Like, but I told him, like, it just, you know, we just going to have to take slow steps. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really mm-hmm. Mellow's my man. It ain't yeah, fake, bro. Right that's right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, end of the day, that's my dog. Like, it's nothing we could really, we yeah. can't erase it. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, I also understood, like, that day when Swift, we in the locker room, Switch, like, Tate, hey, don't trip. Like, we finna go over here and hoop. Like, <laughs> we finna go to Cleveland and we finna hoop. Like, we just in right. hell and now we in heaven. Like, <laughs> like that's how he's like, <laughs> right. <laughs> He had, traded, he had already been traded before, so he understanding the business. This your first time you had to just have the band aid ripped though. They just ripped the band aid. Exactly hey, look, he's still hurt. He got mixed emotions. Like, man, I'm mixed tape. I'm doing this. I didn't like we was right. We had a whole movement. What they doing? Like, why would they do this to us? Like, we got the we finally got the city like rolling in the right direction. And now you want to do this. My mama, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Oh, man, shorty. During that time, like, even that Knicks tape time, like, I had this confidence. Like, even though when they traded Novak, we brought in Banyani, like, you know, Miles wasn't really vibing with shorty like that, dog. Like, it was just a bad vibe move. Like, shorty could play. I ain't taking nothing away from him. He could play. It's just Novak vibe fit with us. Yeah. It was, you know what I'm saying? Like, Chris He Cole, was Knicks taping his own way. He I'm wasn't like, open. that's what I loved about Novak. Yeah. He wasn't trying to be y'all, but he still was with y'all in his own Chris, way. Chris Copeland was with it. She gave us a confidence and a comfort that ain't nothing bigger than this shit. Like, this mm-hmm. shit is just, ooh. And she held people fucking accountable. Like, Word. you know, refs accountable. He'll hold the security in the arena accountable. <laughs> he don't care. Yeah, he gonna hold people accountable. But that shit... And then having Jason Kidd, who was like the only person I ever listened to, if he say, don't listen to coach, listen to what I just told you. Okay. You know, that's my right. dog. Whatever you stop with you. Okay. Jay Kidd, okay. Yeah. Jay Kidd, that man to me. It's like, dog, I, whatever you say is go. I'll do the okay. Hold it up for longer. Okay, it'll be up there. I promise. Just pass me the ball again from you, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's. That was how it went. So I had this confidence. And when you took that from now I'm in, in Cleveland, it's just like, okay, so whoever paid me, I just I just hoop. Let me ask you this, with that being said, right? What how did it feel for you? Like, all right, you got traded, all of that stuff happened. You had to deal with with getting over some things and figuring some things, but how was it for you when you when you won that championship though? It was almost too satisfying. In a way. It's too satisfying and it's so cemented. <laughs> There's a, like I had questioned, you know, after a while, like I said, once something is real to the rest of the world, if it's said to you enough, you'll ask your damn self if that's true. Mm-hmm. So it got to the point where I was like, damn, like, am I not focused? Am I really that, am I like content that I have a championship and I'm just, Maybe I'm not working that hard. Like, am I? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I thought about it. And then I was like, bro, nah, fuck that. Because when I was in the gym, how I wanted to be in the gym, it was real life coaches like Q, and you could attest to this. Coaches would kick people out for trying to play ones with Iman because Iman needs to rest. So stop. It's a rule. Don't play ones with that man. He going to try and play ones. Get him off the court. That's what pe- That was the, the MO on me. Get him off the court. He want to do this, do that. His body ain't going to be ready for tomorrow because the man want to play ball all day. Then he want to play one-on-one. Then he want to play shooting games. Now he want to sit around and talk shit. Like, you mind get in the club, get something to eat and go home. <laughs> but I ain't had no girl, no kids, no nothing. So it's like my whole life I'm getting that. And now it's like if I work out smart and I'm only here 45 minutes, am I not? Working out the right way? Like, am I working still hard, enough time, it's, man? It changes. Like now, you need to be hard in the weight room, recovery process. Make sure you stretch, then you get your soft tissue work. Make sure you getting your lot of reps up, shooting the ball, and make sure that you're adding one thing to your game this summer. Like that's a vet's like summer plan. 
I'm going to add a couple of things on offense, but I know how I play and I know what shots I'm going to get. So I'm going to work on those shots I'm gonna work on this package and I'm good. You know what I'm saying? And I think getting a championship, it tweaked me out because a lot of the like, I got to I got to I got to I got to it was gone because it was like, I got a ring. Like, I know how to, how we got to do it. And I started damn near like calming myself down because, you know, I, I, I get considered erratic or like loose cannon, hot headed, whatever. Like, sometimes I'll hold on to a loss too hard, whatever. But when you get a championship, it make it, it go into perspective. Like, when I got the sack, everybody was talking about the career was over. Iman ain't going to play hard and shit. I love sack. So, like, if I could just go hoop. And the energy behind basketball is good enough. I'm gonna be straight, Joe. Like, like with me, I don't feel like I'm cool because I played for the Knicks. I felt like I was a cool motherfucker that played in the Knicks jersey. Like, I don't, you know, what I'm saying? like y'all didn't. Oh birth yeah, no definitely. Me. Yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, hundred percent. When I got to sack, I had that confidence still, and people didn't expect me to. But then it started juking shit. We stopped calling ourselves the Sacramento Kings. I started calling us the Sacramento Scores. And it got crazy. We was on our way to the playoffs, but playing well, I got looked at by another team, and Houston was like, Shump, come run. And ain't really nothing I could do about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how that's how this shit go. It's a business. How did you like Houston? You know what's crazy? I, I kind of went into Houston with a selfish mindset that sucked because I felt like D'Antoni owed me for quitting. Yeah. Like, I felt like, this was like the perfect time for Duke to be like, yeah, man, push up back to point guard like I wanted to let this man hoop. And it was like, you did the opposite, bro. It, it got worse. So I like had like this personal feud that was terrible. Like, made you feel like, why you even bring me over here? Because I was like, yeah, I was in sack killing. Yeah. I, had a good vibe, got a good vibe. Got a thing good vibe going, going. yeah. Hey, Miles, with my one two, G. I'm getting to the cup, I'm getting into the post, getting into my bag, and I come over here and I hit two jump shots that ain't threes, and y'all mad at me, bro. Like, really mad at me, bro. Not like fake man, not like laugh it off, man. Like, come on, Chuck, like, that's gotta be a three. Like, god damn, bro, it went in, I stepped on the line, be cool. Like, mm -hmm. but it was like serious, and it was like, I wasn't ready with my mental, wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? I, if I would have had a whole summer to get ready, Maybe, but in the middle yeah. of the season, like, you know what I'm saying? And I and I was always hopeful of being outside looking at it like, damn, I hope I ain't like ruin that chemistry. Like, cause yeah. even when the playoffs hit, it clicked again. Like I, once the playoffs hit, I'll forget about any selfish mentality that I had. Like, I just go out there and play hard as fuck. But during the season, it was hard to get jiggy cause it was just like, you put y'all come grab me for I'm over here killing. Like, put y'all come grab me for me to do less. Like, yeah. why y'all keep wanting me to be less of me? Like, that's weird, yeah. bro. It made me feel like y'all don't really yeah. bang. Like, that you want me to be a less version of Iman Shumper to play on your ball club. That's weird, bro. Was that the same feeling you had with the Nets? Like they brought you them 25 games and it was just like, why y'all even bring me here to? No, nah, the Nets were more so I had the mindset of I need to market myself for the rest of the league. Because I knew they were just, the only reason they was like, well, we gonna bring Yvonne is because y'all had that shit to the rule because Wilson Chandler had failed the test. Right. So y'all had an exceptional thing and it's like, of course I'm the best option on paper for an exceptional 25 if I'm if I'm willing to do it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Of course they dot, dot, dot to me that we may sign you, we got to make a decision. I don't think they did. I think they just had me for the time being, which was cool. Like I, I feel like I left there with a great relationship with their staff and, you know, with their higher ups. Like I didn't feel disrespected. I kind of knew what it was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's always solid. Yeah, they kept it real solid with me. Like, Shump, we don't know, which in my mind, I feel like they did, but like, they just was first class about everything. They gave me an opportunity, you know what I'm saying? And I was just grateful for it because I had, I did come off of turning down, going back to uh, Houston because I didn't feel like I needed to work out to prove that I was in shape. I'm like, going to a training camp to show y'all I'm in shape or I've improved, it just doesn't really float with me because no matter if I improved or not, y'all gonna stand me in the corner and I gotta make three. So what am I? Right. You see what I'm saying? Like what auditioning yeah. am I doing, bro? Like I don't really know what to tell you. Yeah. I've been 
part of y'all workouts and y'all, I don't feel like going to a mini camp, I can prove anything. Like if I end up on James team, I just end up on James team. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I felt. And, you know, I may have looked at it wrong, but that's why I didn't start the season on time. And I think it threw people off because, you know, when I don't hoop, I'm not one of them guys that because I didn't hoop or I don't have a game today, now I don't come outside or I don't live my life or I don't have, I don't, yeah. nah, bro. Like if I'm not in the league, like every day I haven't been in the league, my wife knows Iman gonna be up in the morning. He gonna work out. He gonna probably have a second, second workout where it's just shooting or conditioning depending on the time. But he's gonna have two workouts a day. She knows this already. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to wake up, work out, so that I don't feel anxiety the whole day that I ain't getting no work in. But I'm going to kick it. I'm going to take Junie out. We're going to hang out. We're going to have a good time. I'm going to rap because I've been rapping even while I was hooping. So why? Just because I don't have a job. That give me mm-hmm. more time to rap, stupid. Like, I'm not I'm not saying I'm changing professions. I'm just like, gee, I'm rapping right now because I ain't got a game. If I had a game, I wouldn't rap right now. But I don't have a game. So I did my workout this morning, my workout tonight. Got to keep on living. That's what a lot of retired or a lot of players who are not playing the game, right. they stop living. You're trying to do that, though. Anytime you do something outside of your profession, people feel like when you were doing that, somebody was getting better than you, and now we shouldn't pay you no more. I don't know why it's like that, yeah. but that's how people yeah. feel. And it's, like I said, it's real to them. So if mm-hmm. I go a month and I don't post basketball, people think I haven't touched the ball in a month. It's scary as hell because I'm like, gee, I don't know why y'all think I need to prove to y'all that I like the hoop. That's weird. But yeah. I totally understand perception is everything. And I feel like that possibly hurt me that I don't kick it how everybody kicks it. You're still going to yeah. see me out about doing stuff, whether I'm playing a game or not. Like, if I feel like I've done my work and I'm confident in going to play for a basketball club, then I feel like I did my work, bro. With stuff like that, like Jimmy Butler, they was just dogging him. And like, oh, he, he's a bad teammate. He's in Minnesota because he's talking and he's just real open with his teammates and with everybody. And then he gets to Miami where they embrace the dog in him. Like, like you relate to a type of a person like that? Like, you, you feel where he coming from, where you get that bad rep and that bad rep, and he finally got put in a position where it's hard to say Jimmy Butler is a bad teammate. You know what's crazy? Jimmy told me to act like that coming out. So me and Jimmy worked out together in Sarasota, Florida at IMG mm-hmm. to prepare for the draft. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Jimmy had a lot of this same fuck you in his heart that I never had. Like I said, I had my dad there. I never wanted to seem uncoachable. I always wanted to be like, I cared about certain shit that he didn't care about. He just, I want to yeah. be great. I want to be a champion. You know what I'm saying? And, but he, he, his lifestyle of how he grew up, it fits that fuck you mentality. That's just what it was. My yeah. lifestyle wasn't like that. So my wires wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I took challenges. My dad would have to challenge me that shit for it to become that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, so with Jimmy, it's like to see this, like his resilience and like his ability to get everybody to play in that same Mode. blue collar way. You know what I'm saying? Like him telling everybody he wanted to leave and him dealing with all that pressure. It's cool to him because, like I said, he got them two wires that don't touch. Y'all don't get it, yeah. but cool. My whole life, y'all didn't help me. Y'all wasn't shit. <laughs> I wasn't supposed yeah. to be shit. I'm not supposed to be here nowhere. Everything is I a plus. I ain't supposed to be here. Yeah. I'm not even supposed to be here, technically. So, yeah. everything I do is a plus. And he walks that every day, but he also walks. I was here at 4 a.m. working on this, and I bet my money on it. His confidence is, I bet my money on it. You were still asleep. I bet yeah. my money you was when I was up today. And I bet my yeah. money you didn't finish the last three reps because you saw that uh, 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 they ain't have no cameras and your weight instructor probably turned their head. So you ain't finished your last three reps. 
but I did an extra three because he didn't see the other three that I did. I realized he turned his head for an extra three. Like, that's his mentality, and that's where he rests his confidence. So him stealing the game, though, surprising the other people, I know Jimmy and what he's capable of. I knew his heart the whole time when he said he wanted to win. I know why people – I know the type of player it takes to play with Jimmy Butler. And some people can't play with, like, a person like that that's so outspoken and just going to speak the truth. But with people like that, they take it right back if you say the same thing to them. got to love that. But I think it's more of a control thing, though. If you, got, if you got too many guys like that, how do you run a ball club? If everybody's Jimmy Butler? How the fuck do you control that game? All right, look, though, this is what I want. This is my question. I like to ask. Like, you from the crib like me. Like, we ain't never, you know, we ain't, you know, we we wasn't, we wasn't broke when we were growing up. You know, you had both parents. They had you straight. But, like, when you got that bag, what you what you went and did when you look back, like, yeah, I did that. I had to go tell. I had to treat myself one time. Like, when you first got some, like, where you had – your NBA money and you felt the first thing that I bought while I was like, I gotta spend some. Yeah. I moved from uh White Plains to the city. Oh shit. I went and got me a crib on uh uh 31st and 9th. 37th and 9th. 30th. Took the plunge. That boy took the plunge. Ooh. I was not ooh. Ooh, ooh, I turned up. That went, that, that, listen, be mad. You don't understand the significance of this move. This move. What, what the 45 right? That's the significance. Listen, listen. This changes everything. <laughs> this change, this changes things like this. This, this takes you from sitting at home one night and you getting the last second call and somebody saying you want to do ABC and you knowing without a shadow of a doubt, I'm not about to do it. To when he moved to 37th and 9th. Anything is possible anytime. Do A, B, and C that night. You are right there. <laughs> I'm talking about I be that's why I say the 45 minute, the 40 minute drive, that's the difference. That, hey, look, that took all that out the equation, bro. I'm liable for anything. Like, it can happen. It, it's a possibility. Whatever. It, it, hey, you say the right thing, I'm gone. Because it's that talk. quick. I could, I, could, I could get that hour of sleep early on in the day, come pop out for an hour. It only take an hour. <laughs> Anything I need to do, it only take an hour. Let me pop out, show face, get done what I need to get done. I'm about it. Like that's just that's just yeah. I, I think the the first time I really spent my money was on my crib. Cause what I was paying like eight nine a month tweaking. Ooh. I'm paying eight nine. Ooh, that's thousand. That's eight thousand. You speaking of you talking about you had to have a nice crib, right? Like you some you some like a superhero, dog. Like not one, but you didn't deliver. Both your child's at the crib, but like, please, 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 like, how? Like, bro, I'm, I'm talking about. I was there for all of my kids' birth, and I'm sitting there, and I was not cool. I was not, and I'm talking about. I can watch, but I ain't participating. Bro, you talking about? Time you know, out. I'm talking about. Watch though. These miles, I'm talking about. You talking about watching? I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm shaking up while all of the the professionals are here in place doing what they're supposed to do. <laughs> my man is by himself. Delivering, how, oh, bro? I would have fell out. I probably would have been on like on the TV. Like I can't do this. <laughs> I tell people all the time. Like when I thought about it from outside looking in, yeah, it's scary. It's hell. But you know, like you know all things. You gonna be scared all the way till it go down, and then your survival instinct just kick in, like. Even yeah, if, um, that's your that's your wife and that's your child. He's like, you ready yeah. to go? <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the baby? Uh, I'm like zipping. I'm grabbing the overnight bag. I'm trying to grab everything. She like, we gonna have to have here. I'm like, <gasps> and then <laughs> when she laid down, she's like, come in, just help me, just help me. And I was scared, and then I was just like, I right, breathe, I right, calm down, I right, push, and she put. I saw the head. She was like, I feel the head. And then next thing you know, Junie Hill was out. And she pushed again, and Junie was in my arms. The second time, Rue, same thing happened. Yeah, I planned this planned time. It. We right. were just like, if it happens, we know what to do. We had shit set up just in case. But we wanted to go to Yeah, her. okay. But we know her labors are fast. But we just didn't know if it was Braxton Hicks contractions. We didn't know. 
So I was timing the contractions, but yeah. in the middle of timing them, I got up out the bed knowing it's go time, Joe. Everything is, it went what, 20? Uh-oh. It went, the contractions was 26 to part. And then I believe it was 21. And then it was eight. And then it was a minute. And then it was five minutes, but all of them lasted a minute long. So around when it hit eight, I'm like, oh, it's go time. So these are all perfect one minute contractions. And then yeah. separation in time is fluctuating so fast. And then it start locking in. I just put the phone down knowing it was go time. But even Tiana, like our second time around, she was cool to see like knowing that it was here. Like she like, yeah, it's the, we finna have her right now. I'm getting this girl up out of me right now. Like <laughs> Straight up. That's dope, man. That's Yo, dope. That's super dope, bro. You a real life superhero. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me this, bro. Like you, you your first your your first joint, you came out with the. I remember it. It was the you did the next tape anthem over the over the click beat, right? Now you yeah. fast forward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You didn't came all the way to the point where you got a whole album out. You got a gangster grill joint. whole project. But you got it. You know what I'm saying? Like we grew up on DJ Drama and Gangster Grills. How that feel for you to come? You know what I'm saying? Full circle after all this, and now like. I'm really, like you said, I rap. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I ain't hooping, I ain't doing this, I rap. Like, how that feel like the, you already got your second act cracking already, basically? It feel good to not be lying, bro. Like, I can't, I can't explain it enough to people. Like, it's something about lying that will make you be uncomfortable. Like, lying just, trying to give off an image that's false is just it was the worst feeling in the world for me like acting like i don't rap as much as i rap acting like i didn't record a song that i really want to release acting like right you know what i'm saying it was constantly like how do i suppress that side of me like i'm trying to figure out ways like how do i act like I don't know the dudes that be at the studio with me because I really do need them around when I'm in the studio because I'm in that sound. Like, they make it real for me. Mm. But when I walk out and, you know, they've been smoking, we, you know what I'm saying, whatever, and everybody see them and everybody got red eyes and shit, Iman's a bad person now. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, that's a, a conflict for me because it's like, bro, one, you telling me basically, boom, Iman, you're easily influenced. Like, my whole personality doesn't say I'm easily influenced. If Iman was smoking, drinking, uh, rolling, die whatever Iman was doing, Iman made a conscious decision to say, Iman want to do that. No man to my right or my left is going to tell me to do something and I'm going to do it unless it was my pops and that shit was before 18. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't no man finna tell me, Iman, hey, you should do this and then I got to do it unless you my coach in the middle of the game. Like, I have no reason to listen to nobody. So mm -hmm. with me doing music, I felt like people was being disrespectful to who I was at my core. Cause it's like, bro, this is a conscious decision for me to do something. And now, even if I'm rapping, you telling me I can't take a picture with this rapper cause this rapper is smoking weed. That's his, that's his truth. That's his element. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we rapping, we making a song, and we talking about women, and I'm talking about a real situation that happened with me and a woman, but because it's a little vulgar, it's a little unedited, and I'm playing in New York, I can't put the song out because of what'll happen. Right. And it's like, bro, to tell you the truth, there's never been an honest basketball player rapping. Right. I'm like, I'm not trying to be the best one. I'm trying to be the one that actually makes songs that people listen to. I don't want to be, oh, Iman's the best rapper. You realize how whack that title is? <laughs> to be the best NBA rapper. Right. But music is to not detach yourself and make yourself sit on a throne, but is to detach yourself from that spotlight and make everybody feel like you their best friend. Iman make the music that I got to go, like I go through life with his album, he that down to earth. Yeah, we going to hold him up on a pedestal, but he knocks himself down in his music so that we all kabop together. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's what I'm trying to get to. When I got a song that's playing in, in the NBA arena and a bunch of kids love the song and then all the athletes got to ask who's on that and they be like, that's Iman. 
that's the day I'll know I made the right song. Straight up. That's dope, man. Yo, man, that's been a wrap, man. We got my partner in there, my player partner from out west, world champ, Shump. We appreciate you, Shump, coming to us live from the MIA, yo. What's up? Uncle Love. What's up? I appreciate y'all having me on here, dog. Real talk. Be so knucklehead. That's the power shit. I already know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.